Alright, hey guys, uh, just doing another video on uh, some of the design and manufacturing process shit, sorry, of the uh, root style supercharger that I'm building currently for my 100cc uh, bucket engine. Now, uh, as you see in my last two videos, I uh, went through some of the design process of the um, the two low broder and we ended up with a three dimensional <coughs> solid model of the part. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to import that part uh, into a spree. Um, a spree is a, a cam package which is stands for computer aided machining. So basically what this does is it takes a three dimensional object that we insert into there just like so um, which is just like opening a file in Photoshop you use file open um, and we can then use its geometry to create tool paths for a CNC milling machine now as you can see here we have these these yellow lines um, if you can see them clearly and at the moment you can see it centered around the point there now what well, those are uh, the axes called the coordinate system the Cartesian coordinate system um, and we have an XY and a Z axis now in a milling machine our table movement so forward and sideways or forward and backwards and left and right are X and Y axes um, and Z is our spindle height um, so imagine if you're using a drilling press um, as you bring your drill bit down, that's your z-axis. Um, your table moving towards and away from you is your y-axis, and left and right to you is your x-axis. So the process that we're going to use to mill this is uh, end milling. Um, so at the moment, you can see that it's not correctly orientated f orientated for how we want to machine this. Um, when you import your parts into a spree, uh, it automatically locates the X, Y origin point uh, to wherever it was set when you created your solid model. So what we need to do is we need to rotate this by 90 degrees on the X axis so that stands it up on end like so. And then also what we need to do is uh, at the moment you can see we have our X and y, uh, our Z0 is currently at the bottom of the job. Now typically we run a the Z0 point on the top of the job um, so that we can touch off our Z0 datum and the CNC mill from that. It's easier to work from the top down than it is from the bottom up. But it very much depends on what kind of job you're doing in this case um, because I'm just holding a uh, a rough billet and a chuck bolted bed I have no uh, datum point on the bottom to work from um, so we're just gonna see our Z0 off the top so what I need to do is much like rotating it I just need to translate it and move it down the length of the rotor which is 50 millimeters Oops. make sure you remember to put the minus value on there so it goes the right way and there we go, now you can see we have our X, Y, Z, 0 smack in the, bit in the middle and on the top of the, of the rotor. So we have our coordinate or our origin set where we want it. Um, so that there is just used for setting up our, Z, or our, our axis zeros in the CNC mill. Uh, now what I need to do is I have the options. Uh, we have different milling techniques. Um, this is program direct. It's old. It's a 2005 version. Um, uh, and we sort of have three different milling form uh, capabilities on here. We have solid mill traditional, which is just typical two dimensional or 2.5 dimensional milling, um, drilling holes, facing, making pockets, contouring around the outside, things like that. We have solid mill production, uh, which is using the fourth axis, um, so we can use that to um, do. Uh, pockets around the curved circle, circle or if I was going to make a helical lobe um, you'd have to use that to create your uh, your part um, and we have freeform now freeform is uh, purely three-dimensional machining and that's used for doing um, three-dimensional surfaces and curves um, typically you would use what's called a ball nose cutter um, which has the as its name suggests at the bottom or the, the bottom cutting edge is the shape of a ball 
um, and then that's used to using multiple tool paths to create surfaces in three dimensional nature. So in this case, we're going to use solid mill traditional, um, as we're just doing some basic milling. Once that has come up, it spits up a little um, dialog box over here. Uh, we have a tool menu, we have a feature tree and operations menu. Uh, the feature tree is what we use to keep an eye on uh, our selected parts and our tool paths. Our tools is obviously where we, we need to populate their tool library so that we can select them for our milling operations. And our operations just shows us uh, what we're doing and in what order we're doing and we can rearrange them so hypothetically we can, if we we milled it first and then drilled the holes but then changed our mind we could then go back and drill the holes and then mill the profile um, if you wanted to change around by simply dragging and dropping the, the operation down. So uh, now this software again as I say is old, um, it's not what I use at work. Um, you would usually have a tool library um, with all your current tools and you would go in here and you'd select the tools out of your tool library as you can see mine is empty so what we're going to have to do is set up some tools um, so the first tool I'm going to set up is a 12 millimeter end mill our holder diameter is going to be 63.5 millimeters which is two and a half inches which is the side outside diameter of the nut on an ER40 tool holder our shank diameter is 12 mil our overall length is 100 our tool length is 70 and our flute length is 50. That's a two flute cutter and we're going to call that tool number 1, 12, 12mm 12 slot and there we go and so then that populates that up here. Um, so that tool, a 12mm slot and it's a solid carbide um, which is much harder than a high speed steel cutter. Um, is what we'll use to create the profile um, so as you can see that, that highlighted profile we will use that cutter to do that and we will also use that cutter to create this little one millimeter pocket here um, and that there's just a step down for um, the one of the faces on the shaft to locate into when we press the shaft into the body Alright, so we have our cutter, um, we need a spot drill, um, the old program doesn't actually give you the ability to use a spot drill, a spot drill is a form of centre drill, um, except for it's not the typical shape, it's just a, a really solid design drill bit essentially with a 90 degree um, flip diameter, so we'll select a 16mm spot drill and our tool angle for it is going to be 90 degrees as as opposed to the typical 120 degree to, um, sharpened angle for a typical drill bit. So tool 2 is going to be a 16mm spot drill. Oops, made a mistake there. Okay, so and the spot drill is used so that we can come in and put a spot drill, obviously, um, a spot face. Uh, where our holes are so that when we bring our drills in the drills will center correctly um, if you just tried to straight drill them without center drilling or spot drilling you'd have your drill wander because um, drills are um, not very rigid due to the fact that they have uh, very deep flutes and um, quite um, shallow flute helix um, to clear the swarf out. Uh, next tool is going to be a 15, 16 millimeter drill, and that's for the 120 mil tool angle. Tool three, and the 16 millimeter drill is for the holes, the large, the two larger holes you can see there. Uh, tool four is going to be a 11.8 millimeter drill. And that there is a uh, drill slightly undersized of our 12 millimeter shaft hole um, because we will run a reamer down that so that we can guarantee an accurate um, size for our shaft. So 11.8 drill. And finally our last drill will be a reamer. 
and it's going to be a 12mm reamer and it's float length is 70. Let's, let's quickly go edit that to 5. Um, yeah, so that's what we'll start with. Um, for some reason that didn't update. Never mind. So we have ourselves a tool library now, as you can see here. So that there is what the tools I'm going to have to select and put into my mill in the correct locations in order for the mill to pull up the right tool as it, the program tells it to. Um, what we need to do now is go through and select our features. And so um, we want to select our outer profile as one feature. We want to select that loop as a feature. We want to select our holes. Oops. And just like that, it gives us all our parts. So we've got our outside profile, we have our two 16mm holes, and we have our 12mm hole. Now there, it's selected the wrong part on the 12mm hole, so we'll just quickly go delete that, reselect it. Uh, we need to change one of the parameters uh, so that it doesn't pick one of my surfaces as a hole. So we want to make the maximum hole size 16mm, so that instead of seeing the 18mm pocket as a pocket, it's, it sees it as a hole, so we just need to change that and that. And then you can see now it's given me a profile instead. So the first thing that we want to do is select our profile and we want to face it um, so that the top is flat. So we're going to use our 12mm carbide slot to do that. We're going to set our spindle RPM at 12,000 RPM. Our feed rate at 3,500 millimeters a minute and our Z rate at 1,500 millimeters a minute. Our total depth is zero uh, as it's just going to start at that face and we'll um, have a couple of millimeters. We're going to do our step over diameter of 50 millimeters and that all looks pretty good so we click OK. As you can see here, it's spat out this little red curve there now. That there's your toolpath. So that there shows you exactly where your mill is going to go. So then what we can do is we can go into this parameters option here and we can set up a stock solid. So this is essentially we replicate what we're putting in our machine. Um, I've got two and a half inch stock. Um, so 32 out of radius. One. We'll put a millimeter on there. Minus 60. And if I hit pull there you can see it's that's our stock so that there's our block of aluminium ignore the color um, once that's done we can hit the play button and you can see the tool comes down and makes this pretty little cut across the top and does some funny shit sometimes due to the geometry of the part but essentially ignore the little shape at the moment it's it's just figured out what it needs to do in order to face down the surfaces that we're working with um, we can change that to stop it from doing that by you can see by simply changing uh, our, what's called our step over diameter so that's how far the tool moves over in relationship to the diameter per cut we can tidy that tool path up so now it's just a nice simple little facing operation and then we select that profile again except this time we are using a contouring now contouring is as it suggests it, it follows the contour of the edge of the profile um, so <coughs> we're gonna pull up contouring select our 12 millimeter slot again set our rpm 12,000 rpm uh, three and a half thousand millimeters a minute and 1500 z feed our total depth is 50 millimeters which is correct I'm going to make that 55 so we're, we're going to overcut and that what that does is just gives me a little bit of um, material to play with on the other side when we go to finish the bottom. Our incremental depth is how deep we're going to take a cut each time. Um, in this case I have quite a long cutter I don't want to be taking a heavy cut so we're going to be using what's called a high speed machining operation.